up, you're hitting. So I just kind of like crawl along in the Kia. I get this warning a lot, which is steep grade press brake. It thinks like I'm not trying to go slowly. I'm about to roll into something. So let's see what happens here on these steps. Tommy, today we have two small crossovers that directly compete. What you got behind you? So we've got the Kia Seltos and the Mazda CX-30. As you can tell, we are off-road, and by the end of this video, we're gonna tell you which one of these two is better off-road, but there's a problem. Yep, the CX-30 simply does not have enough ground clearance, just 6.9 inches, and the Kia Seltos has a dual-clutch automatic transmission, which is not what you want out in the rocks. So both of these vehicles have critical issues when it comes to off-roading. Let's see if it affects how good they are. Ready to go? Yeah, let's hit it. Yeah, and once again, we're here because, you know, we know you're not gonna go hardcore off-roading in these, right? These are more cars that you're gonna take to the trailhead or to your cabin than you are actually on the hard trail. Do you guys love cars? Well, we've got a new podcast that will keep you entertained for hours from on-road to off-road, from Corvette to Jeeps. Check out tflcar.com slash podcast or go to wherever you get your podcast, including iTunes, Google Podcast, or Spotify. So I have a special button here. Yep. Now on the Mazda 3, this button would turn off the traction control. What does it do on this one? On this one, it engages in off-road mode, and you know that's because there's a little orange car climbing up a river or something in the display here. And what it does is it readjusts the all-wheel drive system to distribute the torque more evenly front and rear, and it also tightens up the traction control. So. Uh, in theory, it will be better programmed for off-road capabilities. However, I appreciate that, but with just oh, 6.9 inches of ground clearance, there's not much off-roading you're really gonna be doing in the CX-30. Hey, so uh, you talked to Dave Coleman, who you know is one of the guys responsible for the dynamics of this thing. What did he tell you about this four-wheel drive system? Well, it's primarily a front-wheel drive-based system, yeah. and you know, it's not a center differential system. It's more of like a power takeoff to the rear end. Yep. Uh, but he said that when you click this little off-road button, it is tailored for light off-road use, like we're doing right now. I got to tell you, power-wise, control-wise, it feels very good, and the ride is good as well. A fully independent suspension, and on-road, this I think is more sporty than the Seltos. For sure. Off-road, sure. I'm not so sure it's any better than the Seltos. You know what? There's one way to find out. Why don't we switch cars and jump into the Seltos? All right, should we try it? Yeah, let's try it. This is the part of the review where we normally talk about tires because off-roading really is where the tire meets the dirt. And I talk about the grooves and which ones are more off-road worthy, but both of these have all seasons. They're not good off-road, so why even go there? But what we can talk about is this. Look at the approach angle on the Kia versus the approach angle on the Mazda. This one looks like it can actually go up and over a rock, whereas this one looks like it's gonna go into a rock. Now the first thing you notice in the Seltos is that you have a locking center diff, Tommy. Well, it's... Shall we activate it? Yes. Give it a click. All right. Our center is locked. That was not what I was going to say. Okay. What were you going to say? This feels a lot more like an SUV, right? Yeah. yeah. The CX-30 feels like a lifted hatchback. This one feels... But no, let's face it. Not just feels. It is. That's a lifted hatchback. And this is ground up, designed as a crossover. Right. Well, this, this shares its architecture with the Kona. The yeah, Hyundai of course. Kona. Yeah and you just sit higher in the vehicle, the sill is lower, it feels more like, uh, I don't know, an Explorer or something. Mini Explorer. A Mini Explorer. Yes, of course. Yes. I'm of course not a full-size Explorer. Which is a good thing. Which is a really good thing. I feel like I am sitting up much higher, I feel like I can see over, I'm not in the car, I'm like on top of the car, and off-road, that's a good feeling, you know. Uh, I feel like uh, this is much more open, much more airy, even though we don't have a sunroof, which we did in the Mazda. Much, well, much more ground clearance in the in the Seltos. 7.3 versus yeah. 6.9. Which is still over an inch less than a Super would have, like a cross track. So here we have some dirt bikers probably wondering Why what we're doing out here. In these vehicles, yeah, exactly right. Smell that? I smell that. I think that's the that's uh, clutch. clutch. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, clutch. Exactly right, yeah. yeah. Which is a shame because I appreciate the center differential lock and the hill descent control. I'm wondering how long before we get uh, clutch overheating. Yeah, so when, we, when I took the uh, Kona, yep. 
Same engine trans of Goldmine Hill way yeah. back when. Yeah, it did overheat. Yeah, the transmission overheated. Yeah, it's cutting power. You can feel the spinning, but nothing's going on. Transmission temp is high. Look at that. Transmission temp is high. Stop safely. So we may be done out here. We have two very different engines here in these vehicles. So the Mazda's got a 2.5 liter Skyactiv G, naturally aspirated four cylinder, 186 horsepower, 186 pound feet of torque. Now the Kia actually has a smaller engine, but it's turbocharged, 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder, 175 horsepower, less horsepower, but 195 pound feet of torque. So. Two kind of different philosophies. And then of course the Mazda's got a traditional old school six speed automatic. And then this Kia has a seven speed dual clutch. I think it's seven. As you know, Tom usually does a slip test, which is where he puts the car on rollers to see which wheel gets power and to see if the car can drive itself off the rollers. Well, this is a real world slip test because we're gonna drive the car onto this strange and kind of awkward angle where the front passenger wheel is gonna be in the air and the rear driver wheel. And the question is, will the Kia be able to go up and over this gully using only two wheel drive? So let's find out if this works. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with just normal mode. So I'm not gonna engage my all-wheel drive lock, just drive it like you would every day. Let's see if it'll attack this gully with confidence. And I'm gonna go slow just to really confuse the system. So there we go. There's two wheels off the ground. Just thinking about it. Alrighty. So with the all-wheel drive lock off, if we were able to do it, it just took a heck of a lot of slipping. So let's try it again. All right, so it kind of sort of made it, but really he used momentum. So now he's gonna turn that center lock on to see if he can do it in a little bit more elegant fashion. All right, so I pushed the button. I've engaged my all-wheel drive lock, which should distribute the torque more evenly front and rear. Let's take it nice and slow, just like we did last time. That's a lot of throttle now. All right, so I did it. Quite honestly, I'm not sure I noticed any difference though between having the button on or the button off. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. I would say there's no difference. Yeah, there's really no difference. All right, see if you can even get up and over the steps. Give that a shot, okay? All right, let's give it a whirl. For some reason, let me show you this. As I just kind of like crawl along in the Kia, I get this warning a lot, which is steep grade, press brake. It thinks like I'm not trying to go slowly. I'm about to roll into something. So let's see what happens here on these steps. All right, this is where it gets a little tricky. This is really where the trail begins. Let's see if you can even get up to the steps. And there we go. Transmission temp is high. So you can see there, that's the dual clutch. And I, I know you're probably thinking, just drive faster. Keep going, hold up, slow, slow, slow. Keep, just slow, you got up about a foot. No, I can't, transmission overheated. Transmission overheated? Yeah. All right, well, <laughs> transmission overheated. There you have it. <laughs> Didn't even get up and over the steps. Once again, a car that'll get you to the trail but not on the trail. Now you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just drive faster to engage first gear? When you're off-road like this, it's all about as slow as possible, as fast as necessary, and I really can't go any faster, so. Um, you video of the of it, of heating? Yeah, it's, it's currently there right now. Did you get video of it? I did, but I'll show you again. Style-wise, the Mazda looks like it's moving when it's standing, and the Kia looks like it's standing when it's moving. But having said that, the Mazda certainly looks much better on-road, whereas the Kia looks better off-road. 
If you look at the overall profile of the Kia, it's basically just a big shoe box and that's a great thing for interior volume. So I'm six foot one and even in my driving position, I've got a huge, just a massive amount of headroom. Well, okay, it's like two or three inches. And then I also have a really decent amount of leg room. There's no clearance issues back here whatsoever. This is a great back seat. The Kia is 172 inches long, whereas this Mazda is 173 inches long. So being just a little bit longer, you'd expect the rear seat legroom to be better. But frankly, overall comfort back here is just worse. Uh, this is still my driving position, six feet one inch tall, and you can see not a huge amount of legroom. Headroom is also not quite as good as the Kia. It's also just a little bit too narrow in here. So overall comfort in the back seat definitely goes to the Kia. All right, now it's time for the Mazda to do our real world slip test. So same test, uh, basically, let's see if it can get up and over this gully and see if the uh, all wheel drive system has enough smarts to send power to the right wheel. I think Tommy first is gonna try it without off-road mode and then with off-road mode. So let's give it a shot. All right, here we go off-road in the Mazda CX-30. What is going on back there? Some kids in the... Yeah, they're trying to climb a mountain with open disc in an XJ, but CX-30 off-road mode is off. So just normal driving around mode. We're gonna do our gully test here. And here we are, we're gonna go off camber, same exact line. Whoop, it's spinning pretty good. It's much slower in its crawl. Oh, but it was smoother, did you see that? That was good actually, that was smoother than the CX-30, although, it did take just as much thinking to figure it out. So let's go ahead and engage our off-road mode and see what happens. Well, that's pretty impressive. In non-off-road mode, it actually uh, did it really elegantly. Let's see if it helps when you put it into off-road mode. All right, guys, I'm gonna engage the Mazda's off-road mode, which if I'm being honest, is not very off-roady looking. The little graphic looks more like a Mazda 3 crawling up a line of linguine <laughs> than a mountain. Well, let's see what happens with our off-road mode engaged. This should result in less spinning more immediate traction. Oh, so you can really feel it rocking the brakes. Wow, that worked actually. That worked really good. So I grabbed the brakes harder and we were able to get up the hill easier. That was good. All right, let's see if we can tackle the steps here. Now, this is where the transmission overheated in the Seltos. I'm just gonna take it super slow here. Once again, he's coming up on the steps. I can tell you what's gonna happen. He's gonna tear his front chin off. Keep coming up on foot, Tommy. Keep coming, keep coming. Stop, stop, stop right there. Yeah, that's about the... Uh... You want to come about another inch, would you? Slowly. Keep coming. Oh, stop, stop, you're hitting. Okay, back <laughs> up. We don't wanna back up, would you? Yeah, this is not our car. We don't want to tear the uh, little chin spoiler off the Mazda. And there's exactly the problem with, uh, yeah, with not enough ground clearance, unfortunately. <laughs> so there comes the front chin spoiler crunching into the rock. So I don't think we're going to be going much further than that in the CX-30. But the all drive system, in some ways, I think worked quicker in engaging the brakes and sending power to the wheel with traction than it did in the Kia. So good job, Mazda. missing a lot of the things that uh, you know, I'd love to see, which is you know some kind of underbody protection, uh, maybe a low speed transfer case. And, you know these are things you're never going to get on these small crossovers. But one can hope and dream 
Um, you know, it's not in the category of a renegade. Let's put it that way. No, it isn't. Now, and actually, that's also missing a low-speed transfer case, if we're being honest. Yeah, but that one's got, like, skid plates and stuff. Yeah, know? it does, especially the Trailhawk. In terms of competition, yeah. the CX-30 is a little bit funky. Who does it compete with? It's kind of a tweener car, isn't it? Yeah, because in theory, the CX-3, yeah. which is smaller than the 30, would compete directly with the Seltos. Right. And then the CX-5, which is bigger than this car, would compete with, like, the Sportage, right? Right. Uh, but... The 30 slots in right between those two. Uh, Price-wise, though, there's kind of a bigger gap. This one comes in at 32,000, right? Yeah, well, 31, basically, yeah. Right, and then the Seltos, which is basically fully loaded, SX. Yep. Uh, 29,485, so it's more affordable. Interior-wise, what do you think of the two in competition? Uh, you know, I'm not really a big fan of Mazda's uh, infotainment system. I think it's really like one generation behind. I also don't like, uh, you know, the fact that they've made it kind of fussy by moving the volume knob to where Audi places it. Uh, in general, their interiors are designed quite well, but man, Kia is really up the game. And so, you know, this is feeling kind of dark and dank right now, if I'm being completely, um, well, I'm always honest, but you know, forthright. I actually disagree. Yeah? You like this better? The steering wheel is nicer than the Kia. I think the dash design is nicer than the Kia. I like the gauges more. I like the seats more. Oh. I like to see, you know, a little bit more light, a little bit more liveliness, a little bit more openness. And funny enough, if you look at a lot of the advertising that's coming out of uh, Kia with Seltos, they're always in like sand dunes, yep. right? Blasting around. So clearly they want you to think that this is an adventure vehicle. Now let's talk about the interior. I like this interior a lot more. I just think it's a little bit more intuitive. Certainly this huge display and the fact that it's uh, touch makes it a lot more easier than you to use. Oh yes, the display in this is bigger. It looks better and it's a thousand percent easier to use. Yeah. Uh, and I actually like the design of it. You know, these speakers have this kind of funky, almost uh, alien design to it, right? The way they've got all kinds of geometric angles that are intersecting in funky ways. Yeah. He is very proud of that. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, they, they really have tried to take their cars and make them hip. Yeah, and I think, you know, they've succeeded. And they succeeded, yeah, yeah, exactly. The interior, in my opinion, is not as premium as the Mazda in the design and the materials, but in terms of usability, much better laid out much easier to use. So dad, which of these two would you prefer to take off-road? Neither, dude. The um, Mazda has not enough ground clearance and the seating position is pretty miserable for off-roading and the Kia has a dual clutch, which smells funny. Yeah, you know, going into this, I actually would have probably chosen the Kia. It's got that all-wheel drive lock button, more ground clearance, but the fact of the matter is even after just 12 minutes of very mild off-roading, you stand by the Kia and it smells like a taco truck. You know, you can just smell the transmission, the heat build up in those clutches is starting to burn them away. Whereas the Mazda, even though it has less ground clearance, doesn't smell like anything. So I'm gonna take the Mazda in this comparison. But look, these are both fine cars on road. Oh, yeah. We're putting them in a situation they're not meant to be. So if it were on road, I'd probably go for the Kia just because I like the much more open, kind of more traditional crossover space. So yeah, off-road, neither, on-road, Kia, Mazda off-road, it's, you know, it's tough. Let's get back to taking more off-roaders off-road. Yep, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and head over to TFLcar.com for the latest and greatest in news, views, and of course, real-world reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.